excited because I found it for a really good deal. So, uh, let me show you what this is. So, you can't really tell from this box yet. But, this is a game called Arcane Alley. Now, I like a lot of games that have, that are kind of economy driven, where you're kind of like buying, selling. This is it so much that it's more of like you're just, it's kind of set collection. It's got various different elements to it. Um, but this was a Kickstarter. I, um, I didn't kickstart it. I think I, I might have heard about it after the Kickstarter ended. So um, I missed out on it. Um, and again, I, I knew it existed, but I um, I had forgotten about its, its existence. Uh, so yeah, this kind of explains. So in 2018, over 500 backers united to open the world's first black market for selling enchanted magical goods. Let this serve as a record that each of us is equally culpable if things start to fall apart. <laughs> so here we have, uh, looks like Aladdin, we have like uh, the genie in the lamp, but you know, you can't put the genie back in the lamp. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and open this. We'll slide it out. Yeah, let's go this way. So here we have Arcane Alley by Corwin Riddle, art by Jeanette Ramos, and it's by uh, Strange Space Games. So this particular game is 45 minutes, ages 10 and up, and between two to six players. And like I've said previously, I really like games that have a higher player count, because oftentimes I'm playing with a bunch of people, and this, to go from two to six players, is, is really nice. So let's take a look at the back here. So, welcome to the Black Magic Market. So as you see here, so there's three, um, it uh, showcases three aspects of this game. So you use your items, create sets, and watch out. So you see there's, here's the, the scoreboard and then everyone's, everyone's got their own kind of tableau in front of them of uh, nine cards. Well, they're trying to create a tableau of nine cards. Um, I haven't gotten to play this game yet. It's been a while since uh, since I've seen gameplay of it. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look inside. All right, where we'll just uh, we'll put this like this. So Arcane Alley. Here's the Merchant Handbook. With this. Uh, ghastly looking figure on the front. So welcome to the Black Magic Market. Here's the table of contents. All the different components that come with the game. And this, because it's a Kickstarter, and I'm so fortunate that I found it, is a deluxe version. So it has certain pieces that are a little um, upgraded. So like this, the 12 fine markers are actually wooden in the game. I did still get the cardboard ones, but I also have the, uh, the wooden ones as well. Um, so yeah, here's the setup, how to set up the game. <laughs> Keeping score, how you keep score, uh, reading the item cards. So here's a, uh, the anatomy of a card. Gameplay, the rounds. Here's uh, so as you can see, it's a grid of three by three cards, and each player will have that grid in 
front of them. But some are face down, some are face up. So you're kind of exchanging and trying to create an optimal tableau that will score you the most points at the end of the game. So, making sets, inspection. So yeah, if you have certain goods, um, the inspector will not like that. <laughs> so you have to kind of try to make sure that um, certain black market goods aren't in your shop when the inspector comes or else uh, you'll be fined. Uh, bribe, so yeah, you could bribe to be able to keep certain things. Here's FAQ, item reference guide, uh, resolving item effects. So this kind of shows the iconography a little bit. So this goes through each of the cards, explains what they do. And playing a two-player game. So playing a two-player game, um, I guess, has a certain set or certain rules that are different, which that happens in a lot of games because two-player games doesn't have um, a lot of... Uh, with, with fewer players, It's it, you want to make sure the game is balanced. So here's a nice round reference. So you could just look at the back of this and it will tell you stock, sell, inspect, bribe. So there's the instruction book. Here is what you're going to use to keep track of gold and infamy. I think gold is basically victory points. It's three rounds. And here are the pieces. So this is what I was telling you about. So here are the cardboard pieces, and here are the wooden ones. So we're not going to bother with the cardboard, but I will show you one of these tokens. So here's a nice wooden um, piece. Again, it doesn't really do a lot, do much in the game, but it's just nice to have fun wooden pieces. Updated components are fun. Now this is really cool. This is the first player marker. It is a little kitty cat. A black cat. Which I don't care what people say, black cats are not good, not bad luck. They are, they're just as cute and Good luck as any other cat. So, black cats are the best. Well, you know, they're equivalent to most other cats. I think we just overcompensate because they've gotten such a bad rap in the past, but black cats are where it's at. Now a bunch of extra bags were in here. I just kind of use it as a filler to kind of uh, make sure that this doesn't move around too much. But now here are all the cubes and all the player pieces. I haven't separated this. Um, I was thinking about getting little baggies like I do to separate all the uh, different colors. Um, I may do that in the future, but for now, I'll just keep them all in this bag. It's pretty easy to kind of pull out each color for the players when, uh, when we go to play. So, so that's nice. We can actually put these back because what we're going to do is we're going to look at these cards. And if you've seen some of my other videos, you probably know what's going to happen next. <laughs> uh, so we have these cards. And this does. I wonder if the cards are not supposed to go in here because it doesn't have a well. So like here, it has this nice thing so you can pull out the cards easily. This does not. <laughs> so I'm wondering if the cards are not supposed to go in there. Um, so anyway, uh, let's look at some examples of cards. I'm going to set this off to the side. <laughs> 
of those cards. It also has Infamy. I think that's Infamy. And then you gain Infamy. Then peek at one in item in your storehouse. How the crystal ball allows you to look. So as as you saw, the uh, the cards are all or yeah, the, your tableau of cards are all face down. This will allow you to peek at cards so you know what's in. So let's just go through these a little bit. So your crystal ball, bottled fairy, bubbling cauldron. Sovereign Sword, a Haunted Doll, look how creepy that is, that's freaking creepy, <laughs> there's the Mystic Lamp, so it has the Genie inside, another Crystal Ball, Cursed Mirror, Invisible Ring, if it's invisible why can't I see it, <laughs> Three-Headed Coin, Older wand. Sounds like it should be elder wand, but it's an older wand. All right, whatever. Again, older wand. Oops. Uh, magic boomerang. Floating carpet. More floating carpets. More crystal balls. Dragon's egg. Skeletomicon. <laughs> like a Necronomicon, but made it with bones, I guess. I don't know. Okay, and here are the uh, players. So you get, um, I think it's like asymmetrical power, so Glyn, Glynna Goodspell, I think that's like supposed to be Glynna Goodwitch, but Glynna Goodspell, all right. Master Magus, <laughs> Meeblemore, so Dumbledore, obviously. Lady Tafana, look at that. She's so cute. Nix of Nether Knight. Nether Knight, yeah. Corvus, the Collector. And Byros, Bankhouse. And then here we have some player aids. So one for each player for six. So those are all of the cards. Now what we're going to do... card sleeves here. We're going to, uh, we're going to sleeve some cards. I love how crinkly this, uh, plastic is. This is like the perfect kind of crinkly. who he 
is. Um, but whenever I play card games with him, I often shoot him dirty looks because if he has to ever hold the cards, his, his hands are like claws. They like, he likes to like bend them. Well, not bend them, but like, like there's no creases in them, but they do get a little, um, skewed, a little bent. Um, and it drives me crazy. <laughs> um, so anyway, this, having card sleeves like this helps mitigate that because, um, he, the, the cards cannot get, uh, too damaged in card sleeves. I mean, there's still a chance, like, you could still technically bend these. Um, but, uh, card sleeves definitely help. And also, you know, oftentimes when I'm gaming, uh, or snacking, or drinking, or whatever, and, uh, you know, accidents happen, it's completely understandable, but this helps prevent, um, too much damage being incurred. So, um, yeah. So I do this, you know, for my own peace of mind, especially since, you know, certain games go out of print or, um, they're just hard to find. Um, so I especially like to do this with games that, um, I feel like are rare. Um, I think this particular game is rare. I have not seen this game anywhere else. So I'm, uh, that's why I want to be extra certain that uh, these cards are protected. So that's partly why I do it. Um, but yeah, there's plenty more games that I have that um, I uh, haven't done this with because, you know, either I rarely play the game or um, I just think that the game is common enough that if something does happen, I could just get it again. Because card sleeves, I mean, they're not expensive, but obviously they cost money, so um, I don't want to do that with all games, because that would get way too expensive, and I, uh, I'm trying to save money, <laughs> not spend money. Um, but yeah, today, actually, um, I went to a, uh, an event at a local uh, brewery, um, and, uh, they, uh, it was a tabletop gaming event where, um, you know, they had tables where you could go and you could game, but they also had, uh, it was kind of like a swap meet where, um, you know, people could reserve tables and, uh, and you could sell old games at your table. So I actually picked up a few. I actually collect games that look like books, um, which if you've seen uh, one of my videos that I've done is uh, Lovecraft Letter, which looks like a book. So I collect games that look like that. Uh, so I got like two of them today uh, that look like books. Maybe uh, in a future video, I'll go through those games that look like books. Um, but yeah, it's like, you know, tricking people into thinking that I'm actually studious and read and have a library, when in fact I just like to play games. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put these uh, in the box because they're going to start sliding. See, that's the thing with these card sleeves. It's much easier for them to slide all over the place, so I'm going to start putting them in here. All right. Actually, I could just leave this here, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. That was, it was a nice day. Um, and I didn't spend too much money, so. That's always good as well. But, yeah. Um, but. One of my favorite things to do is to unbox and organize board games. This is also very therapeutic, just organizing, making sure my cards are safe in these sleeves, then putting it away and looking forward to the chance that I get to bring it to the table. So yeah. 
This is actually fun for me. <laughs> I know it might be a little weird, but yeah. If you hear something in the background, uh, that's my radiator. <laughs> uh, it's actually quite cold. Well, actually today was okay. It was um, like 40, it got up into the 40s today. Um, but I'm filming this in November and it has been unusually cold, even for, um, so I live in uh, Minnesota and uh, yeah, it's, uh, in the next few days, it's supposed to get down into the single digits in November. <laughs> so I guess, uh, I guess I don't get a fall. I just go straight to winter, which is a shame because um, autumn is actually my favorite season. But that's okay. I don't mind the cold too much as long as I have, you know, layers on <laughs> the appropriate amount of clothing that uh, that'll be comfortable. But yeah, so that is my radiator. And uh, it kind of makes this weird kind of gurgling noise. So if you hear that, I apologize. I hope it uh, doesn't ruin your relaxation. All right, let's uh, put these here as well. All right, so now we're gonna need to open another pack of cards. So I, um, I keep thinking about what I want to do with future videos. Um, cause you know, I've done a few of these, um, and I kind of want to do more and, uh, I kind of want to show off stuff or, um, maybe like do some puzzle stuff, some like a uh, model or figurines or something, something I could put together. Um, 
because I think that's super relaxing as well. I really enjoy watching other people kind of work on something simple like a puzzle and just kind of be there with them. Um, some of my triggers actually are, um, I love watching um, kind of people go through uh, books. Why am I doing that? I should keep it here. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, so one of my favorite things to listen to is uh, um, someone flipping through the pages of a book or a um, magazine or newspaper. It's just super relaxing. Just, I don't know. ASMR is interesting. Uh, ones that kind of center around 
station building. I was thinking about possibly doing um, solo playthroughs of games that have a solo variant to them. Um, I think that might be interesting. You can see how much I suck at <laughs> board games. I don't, I mean, I don't suck, but you know what I mean. So, I don't know, that might be something I do in the future. Maybe. We shall see. Here, I'm going to go ahead and put these over here. All right. I think we're on the home stretch here with our floating carpet. A lot of, um, there's a lot of Aladdin <laughs> themed items in here. But I think, I think it pulls from a lot of different, um, different, uh, stories. Um, you know, and legends and stuff. So it's like there's some Arabic or um, Middle Eastern themed um, items. There's some uh, more European based. Um, like wizards and, you know, wands and whatnot. So, yeah, it's very interesting. So here we 
we have our organized game. It's very elegant, only the four compartments are necessary, so that's really nice. So let's go ahead and put, uh, here we have the gold marker and the infamy marker. The merchant handbook, also known as the player guide.